So, to if uh, in order to uh, produce sound, we need three conditions. So, that means three conditions are necessary to produce sound. Three conditions are necessary to produce sound. Now, what's what's that three important conditions? One is that the body must uh, the uh, the body must vibrate. The mod body must vibrate. I'll write vibration of body. This is the first thing which should be there. Second, there should be a medium from which. sound can propagate or I will write sound can travel. Third, there should be a receiver who can actually receive the sound, which can actually hear the sound. So, these are the three conditions in order to produce sound. One is the vibrating body. Another we know that sound needs medium to travel. So, there should be a medium from which the sound can travel. Medium can be solid, liquid, gas, anything and uh, there should be a receiver who can actually listen the sound. Now, as I told you that medium is important for a sound to travel because if there won't be any medium, if there will be vacuum, we won't be hear anything. Uh, if we are talking like if we are some, uh, we are at certain place where there is no air, nothing is there. So, we cannot communicate with each other because we sound needs medium to travel and sound uh, without the uh, presence of medium, it cannot travel through vacuum. So, he, this is a uh, uh, topic I am just going to discuss with you in order to show you that sound need medium to travel. So, this is a practical activity. You can also practice it at home. So, what is there? <coughs> it is there is a bell jar in which there is an air. It is filled with an air. It has a, a bell fitted and it is connected to a battery. Bell is ringing and we can hear the sound of bell. Clear? Again. This is bell jar, it has a bell and bell is ringing because it is its terminals are connected to battery. So, this is a ringing bell and bell jar has air and there is a ringing bell and we can actually hear the sound of that ringing bell. Now, what we do? We start pumping out air, we start pumping <coughs> out air. So, we see that as we pump more and more air out, the sound of this ringing bell goes on becoming fainter. Fainter means? We are able to hear sound, but it is not as much loud as it was earlier. So, as we pump more and more air, more and more air is taken out, the sound of ringing bell goes on becoming fainter and fainter. And there will be a time when they won't, won't, uh, there will be no air inside. Suppose if we pump out all the air and uh, vacuum is totally created inside. So, at that time the bell is ringing, but we are not able to hear the sound of ringing bell. The reason for that is because though the bell is ringing, but there is no medium present here. There is all vacuum because as I told you, we have just pumped out air outside. So, everything uh, like there is no medium inside. So, these waves which are uh, being produced by it uh, uh, does not get any medium to travel and we are not able to hear it. So, this is how you can explain that whenever you get a question like this that how can you prove that sound need medium to travel. So, just try this activity that take a bell chart. There is a fitted bell inside whose terminals are connected to battery. Bell is ringing and we can clearly hear the sound of ringing bell. Now, by the uh, use of vacuum pump, which start pumping out air. So, what when we pump out air the sound the bell is ringing and we can hear that sound, but it is not that much loud as we start when we started the activity. So, as more and more air is pumped out the sound of the ringing bell goes on becoming fainter and fainter and more fainter and when there is no air left inside we are not able to hear the sound of the ringing bell because uh, there is a vacuum inside and it has it, uh, it does not get any medium to travel and as I told you that sound needs medium to travel it cannot travel through vacuum. So, this actually this activity actually proves this point that uh, sound need medium to travel it cannot travel through vacuum. Now, as I told you it can travel through solid, it can travel through liquid, it can travel through gas. You know that faster like out of these three it travels fastest from solid and its speed is least in gases. The reason the behind is because in solids we know that particles are closely packed, particles are closely packed. So, they can actually uh, transfer their vibrations very fast, but in gas particles are far apart. So, there is 
the speed is there but the speed is very slow because suppose if uh, there is a vibration in this particle it is going to hit this particle and it will take certain time to transfer energy and likewise it will take another time to transfer to another energy to, to an, uh, energy transfer energy to another particle so that means the speed of sound is fastest in solid and least in gases this is the reason suppose uh, whenever like uh, if uh, the train is coming and you just uh, keep your ear uh, on the railway track which is made up of iron you know so if you just uh, like if you don't hear the uh, sound of any siren or something you just keep your ear on that uh, uh, the those iron uh, railway tracks so you can actually feel the vibrations of the train because the sound actually travel more faster in the, those uh, the track uh, if we compare it with the speed of the sound in the air the siren speed which comes the later so that is the reason that uh, the, because the sound travel more faster in the uh, solid as compared to gas because particles are more closely packed so i think you understood that how the what are the three conditions necessary to produce sound and moreover how can you show that the, that sound need medium to travel and out of solid liquid and gas uh, like how the speed varies and what is the reason behind and any practical activity if somebody asks you that how can you prove that that uh, the sound travel faster in solid so you can give that example of railway track right